New World is an MMORPG that's had an interesting lifespan so far. During the beta phase, the red flags were obvious. The game released in September 2021, and initially at launch was insanely fun until about level 30 or so, then it just fell off a cliff, with many people discovering game-breaking bugs, turning New World into a meme goldmine overnight. The devs didn't give up though, they went away and started addressing issues one by one, leading to the game having a major resurgence in player numbers for its first major update, Brimstone Sands, in October 2022. Since then, New World has been rather quiet. Over the course of the past year, it's been losing players again month on month, which is mainly due to no new big content, other MMO releases, and players just running out of stuff to do. Recently though, New World has announced its first real expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth, which will bring massive fundamental changes to the game, increase the level and gear score cap, as well as finally add mounts to the game. In this video, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about the new New World expansion, as well as jump into the game now in its current state to prepare my character for the new content, as well as see what other cool changes have been added to the game over the past year. But first, today's sponsor, Dragon Raja. Dragon Raja is an anime-inspired MMORPG powered by Unreal Engine 4 that's available to play cross-platform on Android, iOS, and PC. Dragon Raja's just released a new patch, including the all-new warrior assassin class, Yasai, a class inspired by Japanese ninjas, with a large folding fan as the main melee weapon and the kunai as the long-range weapon. And if the ninja playstyle isn't enough for you, then there's 13 other classes to choose from. From, whether you want to wreak havoc from range with the Visioneer class, or ride straight into the action with the very unique Skateboarder class, Dragon Raja has done a great job designing a variety of classes for different playstyles. There's also a new PvP hide and seek mode available, where players disguise themselves as different items and try not to get caught by the enemy team. Dragon Raja also features very in-depth character customization that doesn't just allow physical and wardrobe changes, but also lets you define your character's personality and their responses to their surroundings. With the new update, there's tons of rewards and limited time items up for grabs for new and returning players. There's even more rewards and events waiting for you by joining the official communities linked below. So download Dragon Raja using the link in the description and join in on the action today. Download now. So the last time I played New World was during the PTR for the Brimstone Sands expansion. I didn't actually play the game when the expansion fully launched, because my main server was dead due to everyone playing Fresh Start, and I really didn't want to start again. I log into the game, and I immediately see people spamming X egg in the chat. So I did the same thing, and got invited to a 20 player raid group. If you played more than a year ago, you'd know that you couldn't make raid groups in New World previously. The max group size was 5 players, so straight away I was surprised and happy with this change. We basically went around the map in this group and did some seasonal daily event called the Siege of Sulphur, where you protect eggs from waves of mobs and get good rewards. Pretty cool, and I'm a fan of any content that brings players together in an MMO. Basically, within minutes of logging in, I was in a massive group of players doing massive Massively multiplayer things. I like that. Next, I wanted to finish off getting all weapon masteries to level 20 to prepare for the new expansion. I only needed to level the Greatsword and Blunderbuss, so I looked online for the best strat, and the current best method is to do this repeatable Thorpe events at this area in Great Cleave. It was here where I stumbled upon another new addition to New World, Augments, which are basically boosters that you can buy off the cash shop. The most significant ones, in my opinion, are the Weapon XP and Gathering XP boosters, which basically double your XP. You've also got Season XP and Territory Standing boosters which do a similar thing, and a Proficiency booster which increases your Gathering yields by 10%. If these boosters were in the game at launch, everyone would be complaining that they were paid to win, and rightly so. I guess the game's been out long enough at this point that most people have capped gathering and weapon masteries anyway, so it's not a big deal. Either way, I popped the weapon XP booster and got both weapons to 20 masteries super fast at the Thorpe spot. 
Another nice change, if you hold Control plus C and left click, you can spam click to very quickly salvage all of your crap. You'll be doing this a lot during your time playing New World. The next amazing change to the game since the last time I played is the addition of multiple gear sets loadouts. This was one of the most requested features to be added since launch, and I'm happy to say it actually works very well except for one caveat. The thing I love about New World's gear set system is storing gear in these templates actually removes it from your inventory, which is nice because if you've got three to four different gear sets your bags would be an absolute mess otherwise. The caveat here is that if you want more than two gear set storage you need to buy it off the cash shop for roughly $5. I started working my way through the Brimstone Sands MSQ and realised I was earning Season XP, basically a battle pass you can work through which gives various rewards such as furniture, skins, gypsum, currency and so on. Your typical battle pass, love it or hate it, it is what it is, at least it gives players at endgame something to work through once they've completed everything else, I guess. As I was questing through Brimstone Sands there were a few things going through my mind. Number 1, the greatsword feels way more fun and better designed than every other weapon in the game. Number 2, visually the game is still one of the best looking MMOs out, and the sound effects are best in genre. And 3, the general movement in New World feels so fucking scuffed at times that the game still feels like it's in alpha in some places. Like, you still can't swim in New World. Your attacks will very frequently just not register when hitting mobs. Relentless Rush with the Greatsword is a great example of this. It's a double hit ability where 50% of the time only one hit will register. Any form of slightly elevated terrain in a combat area will make your character desync, and the actual running animation in this game feels so scuffed to me. Like, the run animation is faster than the speed you actually run. I don't know what it is, but it just looks off. Also, when you log into the game after playing any other third-person RPG, you just feel like New World should have a sprint, but it doesn't. I kinda wish the game did have a sprint, to be honest, but right now my biggest issues with New World is definitely with the movement, inconsistent combat, desync, and certain animations. I continued questing through the Brimstone Sands, eventually fully completing every quest in the zone, including the side quests. And I have to say, when it comes to questing, New World has come a very long way. This is a game that was notoriously dog shit for questing back at launch. Every quest was go to this POI, loot crates, get item, run halfway across the map and repeat. But now it's much more varied, there's some actual story and narrative interwoven into it, there's puzzles, climbing quests, more varied enemies, quest rewards are actually decent now. The difference is night and day from launch and I actually consider New World's questing to be pretty good nowadays. Next I did the Ennard dungeon and was quickly reminded that I do actually enjoy dungeons in New World, and I think in terms of visuals they're some of the most epic looking dungeons in the MMO genre. I spent some time sorting through all my storage and selling stuff to free up some space for the new expansion. If you haven't played since launch, storage in New World is all connected now rather than local to each town, which means storage management is much less of a pain in the ass nowadays. Bags and tools now go up to legendary 600 gear score and will likely go higher for the new expansion, so I replaced all of my blues with legendaries, got a full set of instruments, made a gear set for healer, strength, dex and mage, then checked out another highly requested feature that's finally been added to New World. A full transmog system comparable to games like Guild Wars 2 and World of Warcraft, where you unlock the appearance of all dropped gear. There is one caveat to this though, because of course there fucking is. Basically, to actually transmog gear you need transmog tokens, which can be bought off the cash shop. 5 tokens costs like $10, so if you're constantly changing your outfit, it's not cheap. Just to clarify, once you've unlocked something once, you don't need to spend more money to reapply it again. It is permanently unlocked for you to use as a skin at any time, but for additional skins you'll need more tokens. Something that instantly pissed me off with this system is that the preview window to actually view your appearance is dog shit, and depending on the time of day, like nighttime for example, you can't actually see the colours properly, which is annoying because you definitely want to get a good look at how your character will look before committing to spending money. AGS, please improve the transmog character preview window. 
After that I solo queued some 3v3 PvP arena, and despite never doing it before was surprisingly less tryhard and more fun than I expected. I'm glad I was able to just solo queue this rather than manually find other players, otherwise I probably wouldn't have bothered. It was quite enjoyable and rewarding enough that I'd definitely play it again. I spent a bit of time levelling up my music skill which seems to have had the experience per level heavily reduced since the last time I played the game, and finally I took on a seasonal 10 player boss, which wasn't overly difficult but it was fun because the rewards were good. The boss had a few mechanics and it was easy to join a group by just Xing up in recruitment chat. It seems like New World's actually making a bit of a push to more traditional MMO style raid content, as aside from the 10 player seasonal raid boss there's also a 20 player instanced sandworm raid boss, that as of making this video is apparently the hardest boss in the game. Unfortunately I haven't had the chance to do it yet as I can't find a group, but it looks super cool regardless. So next let's discuss all of the info you need to know about New World's new upcoming expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth. First of all, this expansion will release on October 3rd alongside Season 3 and will be a paid expansion, costing $29.99. New players will be able to buy the base game plus the expansion in a bundle for $69.99. This expansion comes with a new zone. Remember First Light, the zone south of Windswood? Yeah, that zone no longer exists, it's fallen to the Angry Earth and will be transformed to the Elysian Wilds, completely unrecognisable from the place it was before. Mounts are finally being added to New World and will come with a new trade skill called Riding, which you'll be able to level up for upgrades to speed, buffs and higher tier mount consumables. Mounts will come in the form of horses, direwolves and lions initially, with more likely to be added over time. You'll be able to name your mount and also deck it out with customisable equipment, which will undoubtedly be sold on the cash shop. A new weapon will be added to the game in the form of the flail which can be used either one handed or with a shield. The flail scales with strength and focus, and has abilities that can debuff enemies and absorb ally damage, making it a solid choice as a secondary for both tanks and healers from the sounds of it. Progression in New World will also be changed quite a bit. You'll be able to level up your character to 65, gear score will now go up to item level 700, trade skills up to 250, and the devs are completely removing the expertise system, which means there's no tedious barrier to entry grind that new players will need to go through to get decent loot. The new zones will straight up drop gear that's 625 or higher, and the hardest content will drop the best gear, as it should. There's also going to be a new tier of faction gear, new faction questline, and a new rarity of gear called artifacts, which will need to be awakened via a questline to unlock up to 6 perks, with one of them apparently being playstyle defining which is quite interesting. There's also going to be quite a few revamps to the game, the most important one in my opinion is the removal of ward, bane and resilience stats on gear, which just wasn't fun and I'm so glad to see removed, as well as the main storylines of both Eden Grove and Great Cleave also being revamped. Aside from that the expansion brings with it a new level 62 plus expedition, a new heart rune ability, a new season with events such as Night Vale Hallow and the Turkey Terror, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Overall, after revisiting New World for a bit to prepare for the new expansion as well as looking into all the positive changes that will come with the expansion, I really think New World is heading firmly in the right direction, and I've actually had a decent time so far returning to the game. My main issue with New World is still that the movement and animation feels off sometimes, as well as the inconsistency with the tax registering, and the game still not having swimming but almost every other issue I've had with the game over the years has been resolved, and now with the addition of mounts, improvements to progression, large scale groups and transmog, the game seems better now than ever, so I do think it's worth jumping back into for the new expansion, because even if you don't stick around long term, you'll likely get a few weeks of fun out of it at the very least. But that's it for this video, as always let me know your thoughts on the current state of New World, will you also be returning to the game for the new expansion? What else do you think the devs need to do to improve the game? Social media on screen, help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.